Okay, hello and welcome. I am Lauren K. Wyatt of Love Renegades and today I want to connect with you about the law of absorption. And to help me do that, I have this amazing woman with me. Her name is Tommy Main. Tommy is a transformational coach. She is an amazing chef. She's a world traveler and a citizen of the world. And Tommy and I are going to connect with you about what the law of absorption is and more specifically how Tommy broke the law of absorption and created just incredible love and healing and results. I just want to give you a quick note about what the law of absorption is and what the laws of relationship are. So the laws of relationship, formally known as the laws of love, are universal patterns of illusion that cause separation and within ourselves, which causes upheaval, disruption, and chaos in our romantic relationships and our friendships and our professional lives. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So as a love renegade, I love working with awesome people like you to break these laws of relationship. And there are six of them. And we're going to speak with Tommy about her journey with the law of absorption. I want to introduce Tommy. So, hey, Tommy, thank you for joining us. Hey, Lauren, thank you for this opportunity. I am so excited that you're here and you're sharing your journey as you have such an exciting, <laughs> such an exciting adventure. Yep. Um, jumped in and it just keeps going and expanding and flowing in a really beautiful way. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So the law of absorption is one of these laws of relationship that um, I like to say like really, really smart people can really get locked into this pattern because it's usually people who've done a large amount of personal work on themselves. They're, you know, usually like more intellectual, very like well educated. This is one of the laws of relationship that totally kicks my own ass every now and then. <laughs> and what happens is when we're locked into this law of absorption, it's really hard for us to see ourselves um, outside of our own. It's like a bubble. So we can feel stuck and we're like, wait, I'm smart. I know this. I know this shit. Like I can see it for other people, but it's like the law of relationship. That's this constant blind spot that we can't see. And what I've discovered, and again, we're going to connect with Tommy about this is I, I think it's driven by a fear of change because most people who have the law of absorption, we're so change hungry and we do things, but it's this other thing that we, that we get, that we get to do. And it's also trust. And it's like, what will happen if I break out of what I've been doing? So Tommy, I want to, I want to ask you, first of all, like, what, it, what is your take on what I just said? Well, uh, it, it definitely resonates with me because I was, um, uh, I was creating all of this. And like you said, you intellectualize and you are trying to allow, but you're also trying to stay comfortable. So it's this push back and forth of opening up and surrendering to things that might be a little bit scary, that might take some courage. And then you have this other part of you saying, well, but I've got it all in this neat little box. But when you're in that neat little box, um, there's always this longing and discontent, like going, but there's something more here that's really wanting to be experienced in the area of love. So 
That's where I was. I was keeping myself really safe. And I was clever enough to convince myself that, you know, I'm, I'm really fulfilled. I got this, you know, I'm, you know. I just got, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. As if as I, Tommy, um, she's more of a citizen of the world now, but when we first met, it was in the yoga community. It's my husband and Tommy there. They both practice Ashtanga. So that community is really tightly knit and I had the opportunity to hang out and Tommy is always just making us this incredible food and playing the gong and just, she's this beautiful, vibrant woman and she's so smart and connected. So when you talk about the neat little package, I, I saw that and, you know, as your friend, I got to reap the benefits of that awesome, <laughs> neat little package. But, can but. You, but what's the but? Like, where were you at, like, before you made the decision to, to work with me initially? Well, I, I love, like what you said, I love preparing food with love for people I love. I love my family. I love my grandkids. But I didn't have any romance in my life at all. And I was kind of telling myself, you know, it'll come when it's going to come and you're fine. And, and I really wasn't fine. And when, you know, I'm getting ahead, but when I met this amazing man, I was able to almost with his help kind of open up and see what was important to serve me that was missing. And, uh, to experience things that had been dormant for so long, I'd almost forgotten, you know, how magical connecting with another person was and kind of serving some of my own needs rather than taking care of everybody else. So I want to ask, like, what kind of opened your heart to love and to saying yes to the opportunity that we had when well, we were my experience was really unique because a man that I had had a deep romantic and spiritual connection with in my late twenties has come back into my life in my late fifties. And so, uh, we just like the first, like he saw me, he planted this amazing kiss on my lips and I hadn't been with a man since my marriage, which had been a very long time. And it was just like, oh, I remember this. It was this beautiful recognition of some, it was, it was quite a gift really because I was lucky in that I trusted him. I, you know, he was somebody I knew and trusted. And so I think for a lot of people, you know, when you start dating and, you know, it's like, I don't know this person, do I really want to do this? And it was this, I saw it as this gift that I got to feel and love and be passionate and sexual and in a relationship with somebody that I had known before. So it, and my work with you and uh, the work that we did to remove blocks that were those things that were always there when I think about putting myself out there and I was like, no, 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 you know, it's not the time. I'll do that later. You know, that's a really, that's one I used a lot. That's um, a smart tactic. There's time for that, you know, yeah, you deserve it. But, you know, there's this list over here. And when you finish that, you'll get to that. So, but not with Harold, you dive right in. So he's this maverick, amazing, you know, whirlwind of a guy. And that's what I love in my partner is like adventure, romance, spontaneity. I can just like switch in a moment, you know, it's like, let's do this. It's fun. Let's go. Yeah. And so that had all been missing because I had like created this comfortable place to be. And so it was just kind of like this, I can equate it to like this beautiful spread, vegan, vegetarian spread that's right out there that has things in it I, I hadn't tasted in a really long time and never tasted. And it's like, oh yeah, this is okay. You can do this. And of course I was scared. There was still that fear, even though I knew him, but I allowed it. And it was partly because we'd removed blocks. Um, and 
partly because I was so ready. <laughs> you know, it was, it was way past time. Now that I look back, you know, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, I look back now and I just kind of giggle, you know, and I think, you're so funny. You were just really, you really thought you had it figured out. That's what's so funny about the law of absorption is like, we're like, we, cause usually people who have um, the law of absorption is there's already been, again, a lot of healing work, a lot of inner work. There've been some major breakthroughs. And from that, like we were such good students. Yeah. We start really putting it into our life. Um, it becomes a part of who we are that like we think we we get under this illusion we get absorbed in the illusion that we have it all figured out and like you said before there's that surrender and that push and pull and that fear like yes i'm open no wait wait, wait. later like i'll do that i'll do that later when i feel more confident and of course that doesn't that doesn't always happen right and i remember I remember um, when you and I talked, I think it was during your follow-up, and you said, so Lauren, there's this man who I, I knew a while back, and he wants to meet me at Barton Springs, and all that, and I was like, go for it, girl, just, you know, be in it, you, you got this, and, and then, uh, like, months later, I meet up with you, I meet your guy, and Tommy, it was like, I think all of your chemistry and that sexual energy and the romance and the love and this new opening that you had, it's, it's like you looked different, like still you, but yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, I see it and other people see it and they stop us. And they say, I mean, can we take your picture? And <laughs> so in love. I, this is so inspiring. We're just like, yeah, we do love each other. And yes, of course you can take our picture. And, you know, it, it did. It was a transformation, you know. And it's like you said, I did all this study, all this self-work. I'm going to be better. I'm not going to make the mistakes I made in my 22-year marriage. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the best that I can be for the next amazing person that comes into my life. But, uh, and also becoming a transformational life coach really showed me that when you're on that edge of stepping into something new, it's scary, but it's so important for growth, for us to just grow and be able to do that. And this, you know, this particular law is the toughest one to like sneak around that, you know, that precipice and just go jump, you know? And I had the help of this beautiful man and you to, um, to allow, to just allow, you know? And yeah, all that study, it was time, you know, I'd been getting all these messages from lots of people because they say, you know, your, what is it? Your destiny is written on your forehead. You know, other people can see it, but you, you know, you're not looking in the mirror and you've got it all figured out, but other people are seeing what's possible for you. And we have these, these are gifts that we have in our life that people come in and it's like, they, they see it and they're, they're trying to pull you there, but only you can jump. It is such true with the law of absorption. You said something earlier about like I didn't want to make the past mistakes that I'd made in my relationships. And that's a big one for the law of absorption. Like it's almost like it's like a regret that looks a little more high vibe than regret. It's like, I will not make those mistakes that I made. Um, and that fear can keep us locked into the pattern. And like you said, it's only when we're ready to jump. So how were there other things that you were shying away from? I think a lot of it had to do with my commitments to other people because the kind of person I am is as the caregiver and uh, not and and there are some things that I was I think I was refusing to see about myself because it didn't fit into the box and so but if you keep doing that that 
the box just starts rumbling. You know, I mean, you can't really keep those things contained when you're ready to fly, you know, and you're, you're really ready to love. So I really think the universe, you know, brings you things to help you break free. And mine was all about, um, I had wanted to travel. Carol and I were very, very good friends uh, for a long time before we got together in our 20s. And he wanted to sail away and see the world. And I wanted to go to Europe and carve stone. And I'd been studying art in school and cooking and just travel for a year. And always in my heart, I thought, you know, not, neither of us ever wanted to get married, ever wanted to have children. And so we had all these, this common adventure bond and um, this great, uh, wonderful, fun um, relationship. So he went and actually did that. And I, in my um, training uh, to, become, to work as a professional cook, I met and married my ex-husband. And so I completely, it's really, it's really come up for me in a big way how these decisions that are crossroads for us will just take us away from, uh, you know, this incredible passion of travel that I had and travel, travel, travel. So, uh, so of course, that was my life for 22 years. Two amazing children wouldn't trade it, you know? Uh, and, but the travel was still there. And, and so what I have discovered in coming back into my relationship with Harold is he came into my life as this love, romance, and then he invited me to go halfway across the world with him and travel. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, these are the two things that I've been suppressing out of fear of, you know, things not being comfortable, packing. So I packed up my apartment. I love my home, you know that. It's like my home is a big deal. Um, packed up my apartment, put everything in storage, stored my car, bought a ticket, and I was just gone for five months. My daughter was pregnant with her second child. Um, little Matthew was delivered a week after I left. And all of those things that I was so strongly committed to for so long, my children supported me, my family supported me, my friends supported me on this adventure, and it was as if I had to do it for myself. I just had to do it. And I did it in my world. I know why I have, I have this soul longing to travel because my perception of the world and my place in it has just expanded exponentially as far as my work and what I'm here to do and what I'm meant to do. And yeah, so now I realize Hey, I have so much more to give because I'm serving my soul. I have goosebumps. It's huge. So I want to, like on one of the questions I have on this sheet, it's asking you what the catalyst was for you to break the law of absorption, which I think we're, we're getting to and have gotten around. Right. There's something I want to say, like that came up as I was listening to you. When you and I had that that session together where you found out about your soul gifts and how it played out in romance and with yearnings and um you have divine truth mm -hmm. and it what it sounds like to me is that the truths that you held like being really family oriented and a caregiver uh that was really great However, there was this other part of you that was like a more inconvenient truth, like romance, travel, expansion, like that was coming up and that you were finally like, okay, I'll do it. Like I will align with my truth and then all the different things. So like, what, what do you have to say to that? Um, well, with, it is, it, it is true that with my soul gift being divine truth, you know, finding that out and having that be like divine truth. Okay, what am I not being truthful to myself about? 
And those were risks because they weren't comfortable. And uh, when I found out that my gift is the truth, it was like, okay, Tommy, part of, you know, what makes me who I am is we have to investigate that. You can't ignore that, you know? And no, you all are detectives. We're, we're going to find out more about that. But divine truth, you know, I mean, divine truth, you know, uh, it's a lot of it has to do with surrendering, you know, and being open to something that is not so comfortable. So uh, having that come up for me allowed me to investigate it, explore it. And then once I jumped in, I realized it's like I said, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, you don't always see all this stuff that makes you comfortable. You see it as serving you at the time, and then you look back on it, and it wasn't serving you. You were serving some other thing that wasn't serving you. And, of course, we all really know that when we are serving us, we're serving the greater good. And so this is, this is where we want to be, even though it's not comfortable. And it's the truth. Um, it's not always easy. It's not always, you know, it's, it can be scary. It can be all of those things. But um, and, and that once you start toying with it, and once you start opening up and allowing, it becomes a little easier to allow more and to allow more and to allow more because the conditioning is being released and the opening you're allowing an opening to happen. So yeah. Um, and yeah, I, you know, it sounds really rosy, but I'll tell you what, when I packed up all my things and I went with this man to Van Vanuatu, uh, we went to New Zealand and Australia to just visit friends and that was great. And we got on this boat and, um, it tested everything for me, my comfort zone, the way that I lived, um, things being easy. It was a diff very difficult lifestyle, very physical, very limiting, you know, for running water. Uh, I mean, I turned my world upside down, but I kind of, that's kind of the way I roll. And I, it's like a challenge for me. So I'm like, okay, I can, I got this. And then I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> and then I would look over and I would say, uh, you know, I'm experiencing exactly, I would tell myself, Tommy, this is exactly what you asked for. So stay with it. It's oh my exactly God. what you asked for. And then when I would do that, I would learn. And then I would, you know, I'd kind of argue with it a little bit. And then I'd like, okay, you know, this is what you asked for. This is like, this is, this is the real work. Yeah. I was going to say like, when you said my whole world was turned upside down, I'm like, well, if you, like, with being an Ashtangi yogi, like, well, doing all those inversions, you attracted this experience where it was like your life was an inversion. Right, exactly. It was so time. I think it was so over time. And then when we worked together, things just like, it was like, you know, it was like opening up the box, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, oh, I'm not on my level grounded footing, but uh, you know, my soul, it's like head over heart, you know, my head was ruling my life and I thought I had an open heart and I taught, you know, I, I yoga teach Kundalini yoga. I'd done all this work, years of work on myself, repairing things. And, you know, you, I thought that I was open, but I was open without allowing vulnerability, you know, and, um, that's not really open. So you kind of have to, when you get into a relationship with somebody, which I was craving, there's risk, you know, and there's like, oh, is my heart going to be broken? You know, oh, can I do, am I ready to do that? Wow. Well, well, you know what? At Love Renegades, I don't have this like in a cool saying yet, but some wisdom that I like to take in with me is like, whether it's like in your relationship, like starting like this new incredible relationship as you did, and then other things that can happen like professionally, like risks that we'll take in that way. 
um, risks that we'll take with our partner. I have like comforted myself with something that may not seem comforting. And then I give that wisdom to my clients and that like, if this is not worth failure and heartbreak, then it's not worth it. Like you have to be willing to, to get your heart broken or to fail because we cannot like in our relationships, we cannot control other people. And when it comes with creativity, as it happens in business or whatever it is, entrepreneurship, especially as you know, yeah. we cannot control the outcome. Yeah. It's all trust. Mm -hmm. And trust is a huge part of breaking the law of absorption. It's like just trusting in our own creative process and the universe. Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize how much I didn't trust. I convinced myself that I was trusting. It, it's funny. I convinced myself of all the things that I realized I, that weren't really happening, that weren't really true in my life, just to be comfortable. And so once I entered into that discomfort and jumped and packed up and left and made myself like, you know, I was like, oh, you were, you, you thought you were doing this, but you really weren't weren't really weren't allowing this and that's the tricky part of the law of absorption i think you're right we convince ourselves that you know you know we've we've got this you know and it's we are doing the work and we are doing these things and maybe we really are but once we enter into relationship with somebody then it's a, it's a dynamic it's so beautiful because we, uh, we do get to be vulnerable, but we get to learn from somebody else that is giving us love and opening that part of us. And that's not something we can create alone. You just blew my mind. Like with this law of absorption in your personal story, um, there comes a time where it's great all the inner work and all the personal work we do, but something that drew me to really focus in on relationships and romance um, was the healing and transformation I had in my own relationship mm -hmm. with, with Daniel and you know, Daniel, <laughs> Tommy. Um, there's so much transformation in a relationship. There is so much confrontation where it's not you think you're confronting and in conflict with the other person but they're mirroring things with yes like within you within me like and I would call it like the love life mirror mm -hmm. and what you just what you just shared is that when the law when we break the law of absorption it requires such a huge amount of trust and a willingness to really see ourselves with eyes of love and clearly and honestly and saying like, I'm, I love me and I love this other person and I'm willing to change, even though I don't know what that looks like and I can't, you know, like it's a time, I think when we break the law of absorption, especially, it's a time to really walk or talk. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, damn it, I'm a highly conscious person, and I see this so clearly, but I don't like it, but yeah, okay, yeah, fine. It's not, it's not fitting, you know, mm -hmm. this is, this is, a, this is a little more uncomfortable than I want it to be, and then it's like, no, you're open, you know, this is the, this is a time for growth. This is a time for sharing growth, seeing yourself in other people, allowing people you know, allowing other people's love. I think part of my <clears throat> being alone for so long, I thought I could just do it all for myself, you know? And if somebody came along, great. But I wasn't letting anybody come along, you know? I was just thinking, you know, it's all good. My life is really just like this, you know? And uh, yeah, it's when we go from one to two, it's, it allows for that's why we're here in community in relationship with other people not just our romantic relationships but our so that really shifted as well for me my relationship to my children 
you know, I, I thought it was really solid and good and I was doing way too much for them. And now I am much more in touch with who I am and my gifts to them are sometimes just to step back and just to not be as, you know, part of that wanting to do and seek and help and was that something was, you know, missing here. And yeah. allow I love what you said. Better, better, when you're better for yourself, you're better for others. And uh, yeah. yeah. That is the way that you said it was said just so beautifully and it really spoke to my heart. What, it, yes. What advice do you have for other people who are struggling with the law of absorption? Uh, and what advice do you have? Well, book a session with you. Um, start <laughs> opening up and peeling the onion away. Because, you know, I talked a lot about how, you know, I created this uh, and created the box and everything. But there are an awful lot of things within us that we don't fully understand that are these underliers um, in either ourselves or our past or past, 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 you know, and they're these little barriers that working with you will help to unfold. And then you get to come into loving yourself more. And when you come into, so, and this has come from work with you and my coaching, um, when we start letting love in, you know, the, the mental part of what is all, what the law of absorption is all about, creating this comfort zone, um, you know, we start to realize how much stronger our heart is over our head, you know, and that we don't have everything figured out, you know, and we don't, we need other people and we need other, we need to interact with other people and we need to, we need to take chances and we need to, um, we need to trust, we need all those things that we think we have figured out. Um, once we start opening, once that heart starts to blossom, we, we start to hear messages that aren't our head. You know, I call them the still small voice, you know, and they come and they'll just come and I'll be like, oh, okay, you know, and it's, it's not the voice of the head and it's not the voice of reason, but it's, you know, a voice I'm developing the ability to listen to more and more. And as, again, practice and listening to that um, allows hearing it more. And then that's more guidance that you're getting. Yeah. Guidance, your souls, your purpose, your guidance, why we're here. So my, the biggest thing that's happened to me with all of this realization is what I'm here to do, you know, and that, I, I want to do it. I want to help people um, find their truth and empower them to do it. And this huge shift is going on on our planet, and I, I'm to be a part of it. And I love that you've chosen professionally to align to your gifts more so that you can really be a part of this shift and so that you can help people step into their truth with the coaching that you do. Tell me if let's say someone is like really vibing with you who's watching this, like how can they get in touch with you and how can you help them? Well, I, um, I start out with just, uh, I have a strategy session uh, questionnaire on my website and it's tommymain.com and it's on the homepage. Um, if you scroll down and it's just questions and then we have a conversation and find out if we're a good fit. It's not the romantic relationship, but it's being in relationship with somebody you feel a tremendous connection with that you can grow. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Tommy, for spending time with me and for just bringing your gift of truth and clarity and illumination to our conversation so that we can shed light on what the law of absorption is and what's possible for people when they break it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>